Reina? Uh, yes, we are officially recording. Thank you. Okay, and thank you all for joining us this evening. And uh, notice of participation and accessibility pursuit to section three of the executive order N2920 issued by Governor Newsom on March 17, 2020, the special meeting of the Public Works Commission for January 13th, 2021 will be conducted remotely and held by Zoom video conference. Please be advised that this pursuit to the executive order and to ensure the health and safety of the public by limiting human contact that could spread COVID-19 virus. Council chambers will not be open for the meeting. Commissioner, commissioners will be participating remotely and will be physically present at the council and will not be physically present at the council chambers. Uh, to maximize public safety, still maintaining transparency and public access. Members of the public can observe in meeting via Zoom in one of the three matches mentioned below. So with that, I, I thank you all for joining us this evening. Thank you, Mayor Mahmoud, for, as well, for joining us. Um, and we will begin with our Pledge of Allegiance, I believe, and I think that is going to be led by our Vice Chair Riley, Julie. Um, we'll just go ahead and do a quick roll call and then we'll- Oh, do I'm sorry, go ahead. Yeah, no problem. Okay, uh, so our roll call, uh, Chair Sam Hernandez. Here. Vice Chair Julie Riley. Here. Commissioner David Malling. Here. Commissioner Charles Trevino. Here. Our staff president is uh, our Acting Deputy Director of Public Works, Garrett Crawford. Here. And we have uh, Shahid, which is our Public Works Director. And myself, Raina Salazar Martin, I'm the Public Works Management Assistant. And in attendance, we also have uh, Mayor Mahmood. Perfect. Thank you. So if you would if like, like to do the pledge now, yes. Pledge of Allegiance, Chair, uh, Vice Chair Riley. And I think we have a flag behind Charles. <laughs> I pledge allegiance to the flag Thank of the United, United States of America and to the Republic, Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, God indivisible, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay. okay. All right. Um, I understand there may be, or is there any public comments? Uh, there were no public comments submitted before the deadline oh. for today's meeting. Okay. And whether public email or, or voice, none of them. Okay. None. All right. Um, I know that we are expecting to have, and I think the announcement will be made next council meeting as far as a new commission. That's correct. Okay, so we will bear with it as, uh, as we go along with our sworn in duties. All right. Um, I know that uh, RC didn't, she was, she left us for, some other endeavor, um, and I'm sure that whatever it was, it was well worth it. Uh, <laughs> you want to go ahead and fill us in? Or right, do you know? so we do have a vacancy for our commission. Um, we also have a we have a new city council liaison to be appointed. So that's all pending for our January 20th city council meeting. We will have that information uh, for our next meeting. So all, hopefully all of that will be given to us right after um, next week's meeting. Um, so that's the status on, on those two items. And our current board now will remain for at least another year or two? That's correct. Okay. All right. So thank you once again. Oh, all right. Um, I'm guessing that uh, Garrett's going to have to handle the next 
item? Yes. So um, <clears throat> as Rain is setting up for the presentation, um, this is our um, capital improvement program budget. Um, it's, it's an outline at this point. It's a, it's a four year um, capital improvement program. And uh, just know that this is all sort of pending um, our budget. So once we have an approved um, operating budget, then our capital budget will be approved uh, along with that. So this may change um, in the next couple of months when we have some more information um, based on um, any kind of uh, income shortfalls or changes that may or may not occur due to COVID and other um, budgetary items. So, <clears throat> so as you can see right here on the splash page, we have, you know, this is for 2020 to 2024. Uh, right now, if you'd go to the next <clears throat> um, program summary, next please. So um, this table of contents, so it kind of gives us an overview. We have totals by category, appropriations by category, totals by fund, and appropriations by fund. Next, please. So here's kind of the overall uh, big picture of kind of what we've, we assume um, we need to, to do to be able to fund the, the capital projects in the rest of the, um, the budget and the presentation. So you'll notice uh, municipal buildings and facilities, um, you know, we wanna put a lot of money up front into some of those uh, projects to get caught up. Um, as you know, I did a presentation a few months ago on um, the facilities um, and municipal buildings um, uh, status project. So it kind of, what we did is we hired a consultant to come in and kind of give us the status of all the, where the buildings are, what kind of maintenance is needed. And, you know, if we defer maintenance versus doing maintenance up front, how, um, you know, where we're at. So we're trying to get ahead of that in this uh, category here. Streets and street scrapes. Um, this is like where the overlay projects are um, and, you know, repaving, resurfacing projects, street light traffic and lighting. Um, we have a lot of projects coming in here um, and I'm sure you're aware and we can talk about, um, we received a lot of grants and we have a lot of projects in development at this point. Uh, water, I will go through IT projects um, real quickly. <clears throat> and then stormwater, sewer, uh, water conservation programs, and parks. Uh, next. Um, here is basically the appropriation by uh, category. So you can, as you can see, water is 57%. And our next biggest is streets and streetscapes at 26%. Uh, next, please. <clears throat> so here's the totals by fund. So we have the 710 Mobility Fund, Caltrans, Rogan Funds, <clears throat> Uh, gas tax measure aid, and these are these are estimations here of what we what we believe um, we would like to spend on these projects. So, um, Mr. Chairman, I have a question, Mr. Chairman. Sure. You know what what has led us to have such a gap in in um, in water um, the need for such water improvements? I mean, we have uh, it seems that we have fallen behind yet. Um, the residents are, are having ever increasing amounts to pay for water. Why have we fallen so far behind? Um, I think if, if I take that, sure. I think we are self-sufficient in the water. We are don't, don't have, I think we have sufficient reserves available for the water. So our, our, our water budget and program is, is self-sufficient. So we don't see a budget shortfall in that 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 category. But that being said, we are doing an integrated water and wastewater management plan that will come and identify the new projects, the existing critical project, and what are the maintenance need for over the next 30 years. And that and based on that, a study will be done if we need to go back and revise the water layers, we'll do it. So basically we are waiting for that study. I study is almost, I think, uh, 60, 70 percent complete. So they're just working on the sewer side. So we are integrating all these utilities into one big study. So we don't have to look three different, uh, different studies. So that will determine the future. But given so far what the study has identified, I think we are on track, whatever maintenance we need to do, we are doing it continuously. So our infrastructure is not really in a critical condition. Majority of it, there may be a small segments here and there, but majority of our water infrastructure is in good condition. Charlie, are you awesome. asking because you see the water conservation reserve fund so low compared to other items on there? 
And and it, yes, and Sam, it appears that that we're we're playing catch up on 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 that particular fun thing. And, and I noticed that uh, that that item, you know, it, like I said, it's, it's low as you, as you mentioned. Okay. But, but I we also have a, a, a water rate increase. I believe about fifteen percent. I think um, Charles, if if I may, the um, this is what we propose to spend. That's not the total balance in those funds. These are what we think we'll need to spend out of those funding sources for projects in the CIP budget. That we also mentioned that although the city has made significant progress in upgrading all of our major reservoirs and um, graves is now complete in San Marino, but we still have Billiki Tank, um, which is not seismically stable. And um, the last I saw, and this was years and years ago, probably about 10 years ago, our estimated loss through seepage in our municipal distribution system exceeded that recommended by AWWA. Um, and then finally, we also wish to someday um, implement um, AMR, automatic meter reading, because that is not only far more efficient in terms of um, being able to, um, to save some personnel costs uh, instead of having a, a, a meter reader go out to properties, but also we can provide real-time real -time information and advise our residents of um, potential leaks. This has been a problem where I know several times residents have been very surprised to receive a very large water bill. And it's because lo and behold, there's a leak somewhere within their system. And if we had AMR, they would be able to access real-time information. So we still have quite a bit to do in water. Uh, what's the uh, cost associated with that? And is that somehow something that could be brought up to the, uh, the front, um, if at all possible? So we, we do have a cost, previously studies done, we do have a study done in that one. I think it was the cost was substantial. I don't know at the top of my head, but I, we can let you know on the next meeting. So in Tana, do have, we do have a cost, but this integrated based water management program, that was done a few years back, we'll update those costs. So we can let you know in the next, what, what if we have to implement that program upfront, what will be a cost for the extension? Yeah, it, because I think that would be, from what Diane is saying, very beneficial and factor that into another rate increase in the future if we're having increases, if we can incorporate that because that would really make it very efficient for you guys as well as all the residents accordingly. Yeah, yeah, we'll yeah this is a good opportunity also for me to mention that um, our need to, um, to hurry up and comply with the state's um, almost immediate implement implementation of regulations for TCP 123 um, really caused us to, um, to incur substantial costs. We have through outside counsel initiated litigation. It's being done on a contingency basis by um, a law firm out of the Bay Area that specializes in um, representation of uh, public entities in such and, and similar matters. And so if we are able to, um, to be successful in that lawsuit, that will, we'll be able to recover our costs incurred, which were substantial. So then looking at this chart, what is unfunded for 44 million? So these are projects we're proposing that um, we don't, we're not sure of if we have uh, the funding for yet, but we still wanna make sure that, you know, the commission council and the residents are aware that we know that they need attention and we don't want them to fall off. As of now, we don't have an unfunded project in the, as per our existing plan, we don't have an unfunded project in the, in the we may have with the new integrated, as I mentioned before, because we have West Side Reservoir, which needs, you know, that's a separate big element. But our, our programs are fully funded to the need what we have. Now. But again, once you get the new integrated based management plan, they will identify the new project, reassess the condition of this, that may change. So the point which you are referring to the water conservation, this is not 
a water utility system. This is the fund which we use to give, give the re rebates and encourage our resident and do outreach, you know, to go to the draft trawl and plant, you know, upgrade the, their trough, you know, driveways, infiltration of water. So that's that's that fund. So I and that's too we in the last couple of years we've not been able to spend all because we we've been saving money out of this thing, although we are very aggressive in our in in our in our in our rebates. Saeed, are you planning on doing a pilot project for the um, automatic meter reading before you roll out an, an entire transition to that? So let me, I think we should see, wait till the time we get the new integrated waste management board comes back. They will have all the recommendations, but it's a good idea if they recommend it. So we can go and do a pilot uh, project, you know. But the only thing is, even if we do a pilot, pilot project, uh, we still have to go back and institute all those uh, communication system, which is not the meter, which is expensive. It's the communication in the meter, which is which is expensive. So whether I do 10, uh, 10 blocks or 10 houses, I still need to have that communication. You know? And there may be issues some of the places in the city where we may not have the communication. So those kinds of things will be addressed through the integrated waste management plan, but we can we we can certainly we have to start and do this wherever we can implement. We should be implementing, you know, uh, logically and moving forward. Well, um, is, that, uh, we, is that widely used by a lot of other cities, or is this something that other cities embrace, or is it something that's not perfected yet, Shahid? So other cities, for example, the cities I work, we used it, and everybody was very happy. In, 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 with, with, with the system and not very many cities use. I would say maybe about about eight to ten percent of the cities, you know, they have shifted to that. And those are the cities which are which have a lot of outside help. They can manage this because I was just that was my first question: why we don't go to that meters? And then my staff showed me the cost per resident, and that was quite substantial. And I understand when the whole system said and done, it will significantly raise their uh, you know, uh, uh, meter, uh, uh, meter, meter bills. You know, either we have some kind of a grant funding in place, you know, to reduce that effect. Right. And we, we can look into that, you know, once we get the study bad, we'll, we'll come back and together we'll find out what our options and possibilities are. Okay. There's a lot of issues out there with, um, you know, DWP in Los Angeles is just pulling, you know, doing pilot projects because there are privacy issues, you know, customers haven't fully embraced this on a regional or even nationwide Okay, but if I'm understanding correctly, it could be cost prohibitive from what I'm could be. It could be. It could be cost prohibitive. You know, it could got be. it. Um, yeah, that's yeah, we we were we were starting it in Thousand Oaks and we did some test areas and it was just the IT backbone to store all that data to have live data. It's it's a lot of infrastructure to in, install and plus the remote, you know, communication systems like Shahid said. Got it. All right. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay. Can I ask one more question before you move on? And Absolutely. Just a basic understanding of if something's appropriated, do you have another column somewhere or do, do you have knowledge as to whether all of the money that was appropriated was spent? Uh, and it may that, not be this slide, but maybe the future slides that no, come this after this. This not give you what we spent. This is what we budgeted. You know, The spend, day to day spend, if you need a particular budget, let you know we need to get into the finance you know, because they manage it. So, but this was the budget, what is the balance? We will know at the end of the year what we spent, what we did not spend. If, it did, if the projects are generally carry forward, we don't forego the money. The project take, if we have a capital project it can take multiple years. So we don't really suspend the funding. So it will just move to the next, until unless we drop the project. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Garrett. No problem. Uh, Rain, if you would please, next slide. So here's the uh, lovely pie chart um, based on the appro appropriations by fund. <clears throat> and next slide. So here, here we'll kind of um, drill down into some more of the details. So here we'll go into municipal buildings and facilities. And this is, here's the projects inside um, of what makes up those totals. So the uh, compressed natural gas station upgrade, um, just miscellaneous um, building repairs and upgrades, civic center improvements, Eddie Park House, Orange Grove, Ironworks, Senior Center, War Memorial. 
So these are all the buildings and facilities that we know over the next five years that we need to um, put some funding into to uh, bring them up to speed based on the report that we received. And this is just the critical needs. It's not the full renovation of the building. You know, this is just based on the critical needs. Uh, uh, because I was looking at the Addy House and Addy House to renovate the Addy House, the existing condition. And I think there was an estimate of over a million dollars, million to $2 million, you know. So it's, it's just a critical, just to keep the uh, building uh, in, in some way operational. Well, give me an example of what type of improvements needed to be done and let's just say any part you know they identify first of all they look at the integrity of the in infrastructure that's the most important and if they're that's then 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 they'll make you know like uh, repair, replace some of the joists replace a roof roof is critical portion windows are critical portion the flooring is critical portion lighting system and the associated hardware is a critical system you know which basically is which basically not the static part of the thing, which basically the first priority is the integrity of the, of the building and structure. And the second one is the utility of the building. Like upgrading the water is very important. If we don't have water, don't have the uh, electric uh, HVAC system, building becomes non-functional. So, so it, it's given the report. If you want, we can send you a copy of the report. It's well, I guess I'm just curious as to what if, if the breakdown, the individual breakdowns, when you start talking about the maintenance on the senior center, let's say, and we've got $40,000, and then we talk about Eddie Park at $500,000, uh, it, it just surprises me that there's that much maintenance that's needed um, at a park. And and if, you, if you visit Eddie Park, the building is structurally deficient, it's almost... Well, Floors are caving, the roof is caving, so it's really a lot of work needs to. The window needs to be. Yeah, it, it's not the park; it's the house. Primarily. It's the house. Yeah, and, yeah. and right. I hate to Which, think about it as a, as a as a contractor. I started thinking, for that kind of money, I could build a new one for half that price. It's the historical nature that we know that the the architects and the contractors that specialize in the historical well, rehabilitation it, it's yeah, very costly. It, and, and that's where the key comes in, is the historical portion of it. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. I'd like to send Sam Hernandez on the weekend. <laughs> <laughs> so that was, give me an estimate. I thought I can build three more houses. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I have the same question. <laughs> is, right. Do any of the other commissioners have any questions on this slide or mayor? All right. Uh, you know, on municipal buildings, there was a letter dated back in our July 6th, um, and there was a couple of items. Uh, one was there was some work that was done on HVAC units in City Hall Senior Center, and it said contract awarded. Was that all completed, Garrett? Almost. Um, due to, you know, COVID-19, we had some delays, but um, pretty much all of the work is finished. We're just waiting for the 30 ton unit to be installed at City Hall. Um, okay. which should be in the next two weeks. Um, and then um, all the duct cleaning is gonna be done on Martin Luther King Day since staff will be out of the building. So with that, it's just a small couple of punch items and the project will be complete. So we're, we're happy to announce that that's just about finished. Perfect. And then I see compressed natural gas station upgrade. I think that's all been done. Mostly, yeah. There's a few um, small items um, that need to be addressed that we're working with the contractor on. But yeah, for the most part, the station is, is fully operational. Great. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Hey, Garrett, is there a backup station in the hospital operational? Not yet. We, uh, you and I need to speak about that. Okay. <clears throat> but it's in the works. We, we're just working out the kinks of the contract with finance. So we had a, we installed a new station and we had an old station which we, we were about to abandon. So we thought, why should we abandon that? Why not fix it? Something happened with the main station. We will have another station available and there was not much cost, you know, abandoning the old station. I think it was about twenty to thirty thousand dollars and we could bring it up into the operational. So we got the funding. I think it's not a general fund. We got other funding and we thought we'll update. So that's what we are doing. The only thing is. It's an old system. It's difficult to find the parts. So that's where the delay is coming in. But eventually it will come onto the line. So we'll have two systems. Yeah. 
Yeah, where, where, is that, where is that located? That's that's down um, off of Stony oh, by the tennis. It's right. kind of between the yeah the tennis courts and the uh, the dog park. Right. Okay. If and anyone any would like route? to ever see it, uh, we could take a look. Yeah. That's that's going to be part of our tour, I'm sure. I will make sure you guys get to see it. Yeah, we've heard that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> as soon as we can gather, I will personally I know, take I you <laughs> take you all down to the CNG station if you'd like. <laughs> All right, Rena, if you would, next slide. So here we get into street and street scrape, <clears throat> streetscapes. So here's um, preventative maintenance. So this is cap and seal slurry, um, where we you know take take the roads that qualify for that and and you know give them some extra life. So these would be ones that we've recently repaved, and we're just trying to extend the life out of those streets, so we don't have to go back and do a full mill and fill on those. Um, city sidewalk and ADA improvements. Um, general street improvements, <clears throat> the MTMP, um, which we're pretty close to finishing. Um, we're working on taking that to council soon for their adoption. Uh, Mission Street Pedestrian Improvement Project, the 110 Interchange at Fair Oaks, the Regional Co Corridor Improvements, these are all in progress. Uh, Columbia Street, Pasadena Avenue turn lanes, some striping. We also have the Fremont Avenue Huntington signage, Gravelia Street, uh, striping and signal timing, uh, bikeways, and then the, uh, and more of the bike funding. So this is getting into our bike master plan that we're, we're starting to fund those projects here. Mr. Chair, could I ask a question about the, um, the interchange at Fair Oaks? Mm -hmm. um, and basically, I'm just wondering, you know, what does that entail? It seems like it's a really big price tag. So let me, what it is, this is, this is a big project and outstanding with the city for last, I don't know, I would say the first time we got the funding was 17, 18 years ago, but that's the project where we want to improve the flow on Fair Oaks Avenue. What we remove all the bottlenecks along the Fair Oaks Avenue and keep all my north south traffic on Fair Oaks Avenue rather than using my other arterial, which goes through our neighborhood streets. So the project is try to reconstruct uh, the interchange and more move more capacity. It entails construction of a one on ramp, uh, one on ramp uh, for uh, at for the highway and expansion of the off ramp at the highway. But we have some limitation of right of way constraints at that area. Uh, so we are working with uh, both Metro and Caltrans. And, and, and we almost agreed on expanding the scope of the project to cover the whole Fair Oaks Avenue, including the interchange portion. So we don't shift that problem from one location to another other location. So that's about $70 million uh, project. And there's a study on ongoing on that right now, is there not? It still has approved us to move forward and in, initiate a study very recently. So I have to write an RFP in over the next couple of months. We just make sure we write an ironclad RFP because you know the project success and failure depends upon the RFP. So, so we're going to write that RFP in over the next couple of months and then go for the uh, seek proposal on this one. So hopefully by the end of the summer, and the COVID will be behind us, the traffic gets back to normal. And at that time, you know, we will have somebody on board uh, doing modeling and analysis on the project. Thank you. <clears throat> Any other questions? Not yet. Okay. Uh, I have um, one, many years ago, we obtained a grant from Metro to install wayfinding signs and I think um, it sat at Public Works and by the time, it, this was years ago, by the time, pre predating either of your arrivals, by the time um, finally we looked into it, the amount of the grant was woefully deficient. Um, and for our um, businesses, particularly those along mission, um, I anticipate that there's going to be renewed requests to do wayfinding to, for example, um, alert uh, visitors to the, to the community and even residents of the existence of free parking afternoon um, and all weekend uh, in the Mission Meridian garage. Is it possible to 
it, is there anywhere here that that wayfinding signage is located? And um, if it is, I see something for Fremont and Huntington, but that's not until 2022. I think um, the business community would really appreciate having some additional wayfinding signs. So, so we received that request. So I think we can absorb in our existing, though that easy minor projects should not need additional funding. We can absorb the, that kind of work in our existing operating budget. So we all we need to find appropriate place because the request just came before the holidays. So I, before the staff do anything, I think I, I would like to personally visit the site and make sure the signs are placed at appropriate site. So these funding which we have here, the signing, these funding was basically for the metro station uh, signage. And they are very weird signage. They are very ugly signage, very huge signage. It is very difficult even to find a place for us to stall on the streets. So they're huge signs. And the Metro gave us the design that these are the signs, these are standard signs, and that's what you need to sign. I don't think our community will appreciate that, <laughs> that signs once they look, look, looked at that sign. So that's why this has been, and there was no plan where those signs will go. Me and Garrett took a walk and see if there's a possible location to signs. They're, they're the huge signs. I think we are better served. And then we will have a future requirements. We have our bike plans coming up, safe route to school plans coming up. At this day. We need a space for those signs move that and now we have bigger signs you know which will take a lot of space and attention for the driving motor and serves no purpose because everybody knows where the gold line station is here 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 in here in sunnyville so that's what they gave us and they wanted to repurpose this fund and the metro didn't agree because they said these are the standard signs that's what you saw yeah i should also mention for the business community alerting yeah. Um, people to the existence of the mound parking lot. I think we also need to um, think about how best to provide signage for that. Yeah, I, I think I'll touch base with uh, Lori and go from there if they have additional. So we will take one project rather than doing one project and take all the requirements and then we'll see. Yeah, these are simple signs we can do that. You know. um, but we just want to draw one plan and order all the sign one together and then, then play it place. That will just take some time, but we will definitely be able to plan to do that. Yeah, the, the prices for the sign mayor are, are pretty inconsequential and that's something in our maintenance and operations budget we can take care of. If, if she and I could figure out with the help of the chamber where the best placement for the sign is, signages are, they're standard. It's, it's a very simple, simple process. I, I think they may be coming up sooner than later because with the with the projects that are in the works to happen on Mission and a little bit on on Fair Oaks, that parking is going to be a, a, a large issue soon. Unfortunately, uh, we've we've taken advantage of the school for so many years that uh, it, we may we may be losing that sooner than later. Okay, Garrett. Excellent. Thank you. Uh, Raina, next slide, please. So here's for street lighting and traffic signals. We have Monterey and Orange Grove, <clears throat> uh, Fair Oaks, signal synchronization, Garfield Avenue and Monterey Road signal, and Garfield and Oak Street signal. And if no one asks, I, I guess I should be the first one. Why is it $900,000 to synchronize lights on Fair Oaks? Oh. This is, uh, it, it, that will be surprising. You know, so how much traffic signal, a modern traffic signal cost construction, 2.5 to $3 million. That's the cost of the hardware which goes and the software goes there. So this is a traffic signal synchron, it's, 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 it's a misnomer. Basically, it's not a traffic signal synchronization, it's the installation of the backbone communication system in fiber optics along Fair Oaks and bringing it to the city hall so that's where the signal will be managed. Oh, that, that makes a little bit more sense then. Okay. And because... a little bit more, more. The, the problem here is, which we are going to face, is that once we got this money, we got this money on the pre tax on the commitment that city will install the similar system all the way from, from boundary line with Alhambra to the, to the, to the, to the county headquarters in Alhambra. And this is not sufficient money available. That means I do nothing in my city and spend all the money from Alhambra. So the way we built the project, we said, 
that this is the main project and this is the alternate project. Once we get the bids back, I'll go back to the county and tell them if the, there's not enough money. So you give me more money to install this one so we move forward because this money is not sufficient to go all the way to the uh, LA County uh, Traffic Management Center with that communication. So again, this is just our our neck of the woods. This is our leg. No, this is this is a complete project from starting from the traffic management center of the county all the way. Oh, the oh, oh, okay. Right. That's what I'm saying. It's not sufficient. Barely, not su it's barely sufficient money to do the project with us. Not to cover anything else. That's why I built the project. Alternate one, alternate two. So we don't we find if we have enough money, if the county wants to ship in, then we can go to alternate two. If not, then we need to have a discussion. And has this started yet? Because I see it's appropriated in 2019. Yeah, the design is complete and it is under the process of uh, 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 seeking a design award proposal. So it should be out in a couple of uh, uh, couple of weeks. And then what do you think the completion date is on it? So if we award the project, let's say, it's reasonable to say by this summer, we get the bids back, go to the council and get the award project. So by the end of the year or early next year, the project will be complete. Great. We have to complete because if we don't complete the project, but then we will ask the funding because the city already got three or four extensions and there are no more extensions available on this. Got so it. This is my top priority project. So I am pursuing it day out and day in on this one. Sure. Yeah, we're, staff's working very hard on this project and it's almost ready to go. Right. We have redesigned the project. The initial project was done. The consultant did a very poor job on the project. So we have to go back to him and, and redesign the project. I had no clue of hope. Even just by showing the fiber line and the conduit doesn't work a different. They have to show the supply system so it connects to the various systems, which he had no clue they have to do it, you know. So, yeah. so we have to go back and redesign. And then the other two items uh, um, that you have here, Garfield Avenue and the other Garfield Avenue for proposed for 2020. Has that been started yet, or is that just proposed? And no, we don't those have been taken off the list. The council voted to pen them for a future date, so those funding has been banked for other okay. time. So that will be considered a future date. Got it. All right. Good Excellent. work on the Monterey one. The Monterey Good one. work. Excellent work. <laughs> I appreciate it. Thank you. You're welcome. No, it was a it was a it was a great project that uh, we got to. We got to finish up uh, just a couple months ago. So, it, part of the, and I guess I should go back to the other page. Is there synchronization, and it's just on Fair Oaks, I'm yeah. assuming. Yeah, just on Fair Oaks. Um, are we addressing Fremont at all anywhere? Did I miss that? And I only, I only bring that up because I know that um, it's not part of our scope, I don't believe, but left turn lanes such as Fremont and Monterey, uh, when I say left turn, left turn signals. The, so, so we really cannot go back and start the left turn signals. It has a federal rules and regulations. It has to meet certain guidelines to install that. So ah. I don't think the Metro Road will meet that, but we do have a project, a complete street project, sorry, uh, Fremont Avenue. So we do have a complete street project along the Fremont Avenue, which we have worked, staff work, and the community works very diligently in a close coordination. The community was a great sport and we got some funding for the Fremont Avenue. Mean, just recently, you must have heard just before the holidays, we got $6 million for Fremont Avenue. Okay. We have $10 million available somewhere else for the Fremont Avenue, which, which I am in the process of writing an agreement with the Metro. So I, my idea is to combine both the funding together and do one project and make it the first complete street for the city. Oh, all right, thank you. Okay, Gary. Excellent, thank you. Go into water. Okay. Into water. Uh, next, please. So here's uh, Graves, uh, the water master plan, which is the, um, the wastewater, water, stormwater integrated plan that she had mentioned earlier. We're moving right along. Uh, water line replacement, Raymond and Billicky tank, which uh, Mayor Mahmood had uh, talked about. Uh, SCADA upgrade. So um, I think most of us are familiar with SCADA, but that's the uh, remote system that can control the valves and 
you know, fills the tanks and, you know, monitors the pumps and stuff. So uh, Wilson Weld 2, automated reading. So there's your AMRs and AMI system and then the West Side Reservoir. So Garrett, on that list that I'm referring to back in July 6, the Graves Reservoir was supposed to be completed in September 2020. Did we achieve that date or where are we at at that? Um, we are pretty much complete, if not totally complete, right, Shahid? And um, I know there's some sensitivity with this project. Yeah, we have completed the project. We are just doing the final test and trials. It's just COVID put a little behind and there were some change order issues which we resolved with the council and uh, may really help us to resolve those issues. <laughs> it may facilitate the process for us. And no, the project is complete, is up and running, but we're doing a test and trial and then the state will come and certify it. And then we are planning to have a big opening ceremony, but we'll wait till the COVID is over. So everything is done there. This is nothing, there's just minor, minor punches. Oh, that's great. That's great. The intercultural management plan that was initiated in February 2020. When do you feel that's going to get completed? Which one? The, the integrated plan? Water and wastewater management plan. So it, this plan will be completed next couple of months. What happened once we're doing this plan, we have another issue here where we have to meet certain obligations uh, for outstanding work and which was later on added to this work, like videotaping all the sewer lines and making a report, you know. So, sure. so those has been, videotaping has been completed. So we are in the process of doing a change order because this integrated plan is already assessing the videotaping 50%, but the additional 50% which we have to do was not part of this project. But we have got the contract in place, the videotaping has done, the council approved that contract. Now what we have to do that, integrate that, have a change order with this one. So this project can analyze the remaining of the videotaping and then the project will complete and then they have to give us a GIS, GIS inventory of our system. So we are going to GIS space, uh, everything. So we don't have to go back and open up our books and find what is happening. All the maps, all our assets, all our lines, everything. Yeah. So you think in the next two months you'll have that completed? I would not promise that. I think uh, it, it can take more. I'll, the project, assessment of the water and the wastewater, uh, uh, strong water is almost complete. It is the wastewater uh, 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 site which is holding us. Got it. Okay, good, good. And then um, there was two other items, uh, a 2019, 2020 um, water line replacement. The contract was awarded. How are we doing on that? And then there was a 2018, 2019 water line replacement that was under construction. What's the, and that was between Alpha and Camino del Sol. Uh, and then the other one, I don't know where that was located. I was just wondering, I'm just going through this list that Garrett and I talked about earlier. So the, the Alpha and the Camino del Sol was done in, in with the, um, the street paving program. So that has been finished. Okay, perfect. And then the other one, 2000, uh, for the 2019, 2020 waterline replacement. The contract was awarded. Did that get completed? So if you, I don't know if you know the street name, I can let you know. So some of the 1920 projects are completed and some of the 1920 projects are under the process of contract award. So, so those may be completed in the future. So we have awarding the contract at this point in time. So if uh, I, know, I was just referring to a July 6 uh, um, notes that was presented to us. So I was it didn't have the specifics, so I'm, yeah, I, I can't. So I got it. So there are about 10 or 12 projects which we are awarding in 1920. So they all are going out as one single project to the, for the ward. So I think what you're saying will be a part of, so that will be done uh, this year. Perfect, great, thank you. And on those projects that are complete, do we have a total, rather than an estimate on where we are? Were there quite a few changes? Were we, uh, we we finished the project within the budget. We didn't make there'd be only a small change I can foresee on the Alpha Camino del Sol, and that's because of the COVID. And then everybody was staying home and general processes. We shut the water in the morning and open up in the evening. Since everybody was staying home, we have to change the plan. We have to lay mm -hmm. down an auxiliary pipeline so make sure we have 24-7 water supply to the resident. 
that will be only change order maybe fifteen thousand dollars or something like that at the most. But rest, all the projects are completed within our budget. No, there was no change. Perfect. Thank you. Excellent. Here it. Uh, perfect. All right, let's move on to stormwater. So we've got three projects here. Um, stormwater project concept, feasibility and strategy development for grants, um, the Rio Hondo load uh, reduction strategy and the Lower Arroyo best management practice. So into sewer. <clears throat> so sewer line repairs and replacement. Um, and then the sewer master plan and sanitary sewer management plan. So that's getting rolled into the integrated plan. That's some of the changes that Shahid was talking about. Uh, water conservation. So Huntington and Fair Oaks medium turf removal and landscape uh, transformation, that is complete. Uh, we received, uh, I think uh, $26,000 for that project from, um, uh, from Metro. Metropolitan Water District. It's a lovely project. If you haven't been back, we did the three triangles um, and we're in the development of another project um, to do the same thing. So uh, over time, we're going to convert the turf medians into uh, more drought tolerant, sustainable landscaping. So, um, and the City Hall Impervious Surface Removal and Drought Tolerant Landscape Demonstration Project, that is mostly done. Um, it, I don't know if you've walked by City Hall, but it looks very nice. Um, we're just waiting for some of the furniture to get to get placed. Uh, there was some um, sounds like a broken record, but the uh, COVID has uh, delayed some of the, the manufacturing for the the pots and the benches. But it's it's the most of it's in, and it looks really nice. If you haven't been by, no, it looks great. Absolutely it does. Regarding this section, do we work with? Uh, do you guys work with South Pasadena Beautiful? Are they still intact? Are they? operational with their improvements or how does that yes. all work? yeah actually um i met with them just before the holiday shutdown um, for the city and we're going to be partnering together on um the parkway near the uh post office great awesome so yeah and, and they, they did some cleanup work with the girl scouts on the uh the snake trail so yeah we're, we're definitely still partnering with them as often as we can I know you did a great job on the post office too. Absolutely wonderful. Yeah, and and Garrett, I think if we can keep on using them, that's a big volunteer group that I think can really help on uh, improving our city uh, and beautify all the landscapes uh, in the area. So um, yeah, uh, I'm a I'm a huge huge um, advocate for city and volunteer interface. So yeah. any time that uh, we can get volunteer groups involved in and. Uh, and reach out to the community to make those connections. I think it's wonderful. Yeah, no, that's great. Excellent. Uh, right. Next, Rena. I see here we went to parks. <clears throat> so uh, Berkshire Park Project, Pocket Park, that's always hard for me to say, and the Gravelia Pocket Park. So these are projects um, that were some empty lots that we had purchased from Caltrans, the state. And we're, um, these are getting revived. Um, I think they're gonna go uh, back out for some community outreach through the Parks Commission to see if this is still things that we want to, uh, to do. But um, I know Sheila and I are working on these um, to see what, what needs to be done to get these back on, uh, back on track. Garrett, I have to express some concern and I've spoken to Sheila about this and I suspect um, you're just implementing the plans, but there was a lot more, um, there was, I would say, unanimous community support for Gravelia and um, Berkshire. There, there was still community support, but it wasn't, it, it, it wasn't unanimous. There were a few concerns expressed um, by some uh, members that live nearby. I, I really don't understand placing scheduling um, Berkshire, the completion of Berkshire before Gravelia. Gravelia will definitely be utilized um, and the neighbors have actually been doing upkeep for years um, and it would be so wonderful to reward them by actually completing the project. So this is something I'll be bringing up again at council but I would really seriously like to see this sequence reversed where 
Grevillea, which I think is actually a simpler design, um, is prioritized uh, over Berkshire, which is more complex because the, the parcel um, is not one elevation. It does slope down quite a bit towards the rear of the property. So I will talk to Sheila tomorrow. Hopefully staff can reverse the process. I don't know because she's the lead. So hopefully it's the money spending, you know, it should be as simple. But I think it's coming out of Prop C fund under any case or Prop R funds, you know. So I don't find that this time, but I'll, I'll let you know once I talk to her tomorrow. Thank you. Like I say, Grevillea will be a much easier, less controversial design because the residents were really clear. They don't want any recreation. They just want um, a, a pocket park, a, a very passive park. Whereas there was, um, there were a lot of different and I would say conflicting ideas um, floated by the residents for the Berkshire location. No problem. I think that's something that uh, South Pasadena Beautiful could get involved in with you to expedite that because uh, it seems as though that might be a nice volunteer program with the uh, local residents. Uh, hey, I have a question. Garrett, have we used a volunteer during the COVID-19 situation? No. So we have to check with HR because if we call them and ask them to use, we need, I just have to be careful, you know, we see what is the policy on this one. Mm -hmm. No problem. Yeah, whenever we have volunteers, there's potential liability issues. So we really have to give some careful consideration as to how they're used. Yeah, yeah we, we do have a, a standard waiver um, that we have everybody sign. But uh, yeah, no, during uh, the current, you know, COVID situation, um, we'll, we'll definitely uh, vet all the uh, options to see what's best, what a best practice would be. Yeah, the more we can get volunteers, the better. I think we got great, wonderful uh, South Pasadena residents that want to help out the city. So uh, that might be so something beneficial for us to consider. No problem. We'll look. We'll look into it. Thank you, David. Yeah. All right. Future projects. <clears throat> so um, these are some some just kind of bigger, higher level. Um, concepts here. Um, so for municipal buildings is uh, citywide environmental upgrades, solar panels on top of the reservoirs, and then um, LED light fixture upgrades. So those those we do in house. Um, our our electrician um, we buy so many retrofit kits a year, and he goes out and, and replaces them. Um, I think last year we did about a hundred of them. So we're we're moving right along um, for 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 a one man army. So he's doing a great job. And then um, these are kind of more conceptual projects that, um, you know, we have to figure out if it's the, R, uh, the ROI and things are that are worth it. Okay. And that's the end. Perfect. Thank you. Excellent job, Garrett. Thank you. Thanks, Shahid and, and Mayor and everyone who contributed. Oh, yeah. It was a group effort. <laughs> Thank you. And, and, and to our Members, is there any questions or any comments on any of that that was presented to us? Anything else we want to bring up? Hearing none. Um, we have minutes to approve of the last meeting. If I, if there are any questions on it, I need a motion and an approval in a second. I move to approve the minutes from the last board meeting. Thank you. And a second. Trevino. Trevino, thank you, Charles. Okay, we'll do a quick roll call for that. Um, thank you. Uh, Chair Sam Hernandez. Yes. Vice Chair Julie Riley. Aye. Commissioner David Malling. Yes. Commissioner Charles Trevino. Yes. Thank you. Motion passes unanimously. Thank you. Mayor Mahmood, you have the chair. Okay, thank you so much. Um, I'm so pleased to be with you this evening. I am trying, I'm going to try to make every single commission meeting at the beginning of the year. 
Um, and since you're currently without a liaison, this was a perfect one to schedule with you. I'm Thank pleased you. to report that uh, at our city council meeting of December 16th, um, council approved my recommended reappointment of your current chair, as well as a commissioner Trevino to three year terms. So um, congratulations, uh, that, gentlemen. Sorry, that three years, did you say? Yes. Oh boy. So you are, <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully, when the clerk spoke with you, she <laughs> alerted you that that's the term. Um, but yes, you were appointed, you, you know, be, because this was a new commission, um, you were initially appointed, all of the commissioners were appointed to staggered terms. And now we go back on the regular cycle. And so the appointment is for a full three-year term. Um, I also have made a recommendation, and this will be formally announced whenever the city clerk gets around to posting our agenda packet um, tomorrow evening for our city council meeting of January 20th, but I'll tell you right now um, that I am recommending that Frank Catania um, be appointed to serve the, a, a partial term, and I'm sure um, most of you uh, know Frank is a, a long-term resident with many years of prior municipal experience and um, public works was his first choice and I'm very pleased to accommodate his request. Uh, you already heard from Shahid regarding the extremely exciting news of our $6 million grant on Fremont. Um, I really look forward <laughs> to starting work um, with the community on that. It is just incredibly exciting. Um, there's a couple of other things that I just wanted to alert you to. One is that um, previously, Public Works Department did a good job of publicizing the Adopt-a-Tree program, where um, for the sum of 300, and, as I recall, $350, um, we had a tree dedication program where you could plant a tree and dedicate it to someone. Um, I did that for my grandmother uh, pretty soon after locating um, in the city uh, over 30 years ago. And I'm very pleased to tell you that what was a small tree is now um, a not so small tree. I was able to pick out a tree because um, it was on the the list of approved trees that the city has. Anyway, we have unfortunately had to remove a number of trees um, throughout the city, particularly in the older neighborhoods where um, the trees have just suffered from uh, old age. And I don't know if you're aware of this, but uh, we are recognized by the Arbor Foundation as a tree city. And we used to get stellar grades, the Arbor Foundation grades cities and we used to get straight A's and recently um, we're no longer getting straight A's and the reason is because of the age of our inventory. Um, we had so many trees that were aging um, that we were dinged and so I know Garrett and um, the crew is doing a great job of removing um, trees. I know just down the street from me, we had one that came down unexpectedly. And as I recall, Garrett, I think it came down on a car, didn't it? On a parked car. Yeah. So definitely we want to avoid that, but um, we do have a lot of aging tree inventory. And if this is something that this commission could take up and help to publicize, I think that would be really helpful. I think um, uh, particularly as um, I've personally observed a lot more people on the streets, running, walking, et cetera, during COVID. I think um, this would be something, it might be a really good time to capture people's attention that we really need their help to um, replace so many of our aging trees that unfortunately we've had to remove. Finally, um, some of you may know, I'm chair of the Clean Power Alliance. It's a community choice aggregator. I'm extremely um, proud of that and proud of the fact that City Council selected the 100% renewable energy product as the default energy product. And um, most of our uh, customers, these are 
also customers of Southern California Edison, but only for distribution and transmission services. Very few of our um, residents or businesses have opted out of the Clean Power Alliance. Anyway, one of the benefits of Clean Power Alliance is that um, this next year, it is installing um, an emergency power system in each of its um, member cities uh, and the two counties. And so uh, it will install a solar system and a battery backup. And Shahid, I think um, CPA staff has already been in contact with, um, with public works staff. Can you disclose where the emergency backup is going to be located? Uh, I would not know. I think they've been in contact with RP. RP was the main contact. I know they, okay. came, they took a uh, uh, tour of our facilities and they selected the, uh, Garrett, do you happen to know two locations, I believe? I don't remember, but I think one of them. Let you know, you know. Yeah, I'll, I'll, let me note, note it down and I'll, I'll get back to you. Yeah, I would think it would either be War Memorial or um, the library since in normal conditions, in, in non-COVID conditions, we have used both of those facilities as um, cooling centers, say, um, for our residents. No, and, no uh, so you're right. I think they, they did the tour of the library and the senior center. So that's probably, and then the memorial. So uh, that's that's one of the buildings, but I'll, I'll confirm. So I think, and they also did a tour of the city hall also, but since we were already replacing the A2 Act, so that was not a priority for us. Right. Is, is that a backup generator you're talking about? Well, um, it is, so it would be solar and battery. Solar and for battery. For storage. Okay. Yeah, okay. so I don't know if you're aware, Sam, but um, even if you have solar panels, um, yeah and the power goes out because you're still connected to the grid, you're, you lose your power. So unless you have a bypass switch to go to a battery, right. um, even when the power goes out, um, you would not have power. So to be able to get off the grid or have that backup ability, you need a battery system. Hmm. Okay. And that completes my report. I'd be happy to answer any questions that you might have. Otherwise, uh, thank you for your continued service for our, to our city. Thank you, Mayor, and thank you for joining us this evening. We look forward to seeing you at all of our meetings. Thank you. Mayor, how can we help you out with the adopt the uh, uh, tree? Because that's a great program. I think that's something that really you can get the community more involved in from the high schools to the grade schools. Uh, so that's something I'd love to get involved with because I think uh, the more we can, you know, market that concept, uh, I think the better for the obvious yeah. reason. Um, just in the last couple of minutes, I was thinking we could um, try to do some some fundraising to, to put some banners up, you know, across Mission or Fair Oaks. Um, we can put something on the website, like on the splash page that costs nothing. Um, you know, <clears throat> I think maybe we could develop a, a quick flyer um, that we could, maybe the mayor could do a quick talk during her council um, uh, communications portion and then um, something I could distribute to the other commissions where they could they could also talk about it during their communication section. Those are really easy, pretty cost effective ways to uh, to get the word out. Yeah, yeah. We, yeah, we can link it to the uh, to the chamber website too so that we can get the word out that way as well too. And then Garrett, reach out to the high school principal. She actually does a voicemail um, where she she speaks to everybody in the community. Uh, in the high school. So that might be something beneficial where you can have her mention that and reference uh, and, and use their email distribution. I think there's a lot of different email distributions with all the different uh, organizations in South Pasadena. So I'd, I'd recommend that because uh, uh, that's a great, great project. Excellent. Yeah, I'll, I'll probably touch base with you to, to get some contact information from you. Great. And the, the trees really are urgently needed. I know. Um, I am um, privileged to be a member of SCAG's Energy and Environment Committee. And um, looking out in the next coming decades, it is quite frightening the number of extreme heat days that are anticipated to occur in the San Gabriel Valley. Um, also, one of the things that um, 
other municipal utilities have done this where they have subsidized the cost of planting trees um, near home to provide shading and cooling for um, residences. I'm hoping to explore that at the Clean Power Alliance. We are going to be um, thinking about um, customer energy efficiency programs. And also, actually, this is another good opportunity for me to surprise you. Um, Clean Power Alliance is uh, partnering with, um, I forget exactly the name of the firm, but um, it is, and, and I just got a $100 rebate for agreeing to participate. Um, it is so much better than the program that was previously administered by Southern California Edison, where they used telemetry to turn off your air conditioning during periods of peak electrical demand. And the problem was that sometimes Edison's system was not reliable and they would turn off your system, but they were unable to turn it back on. Um, mm -hmm. The beauty about CPA's program is it's entirely voluntary. And so you get a message, I think it's, it, it's run through Echo B, and I happen to have an Echo B um, smart thermostat. And then it's up to you as, as um, essentially the operator, whether or not you agree to turn down or off your thermostat. And if you do that, then the amount of compensation that you receive will be adjusted, um, whether or not you agree to that. So um, that's just something from a, from an energy standpoint that um, that's probably more within the NRECs jurisdiction, but um, this is a good opportunity for me to, to advise you that the program exists and you can find out more by going to cleanpoweralliance.org's website. Thank you. I think those are two projects uh, from the Adopt the Tree to the Clean Projects um, is something that I think the city of South Pasadena residents will embrace uh, quite a bit. So why don't we, uh, yeah. as a Public Works uh, Commission, make that a pet project for both of us to uh, see what we can do to help out accordingly. Perfect. Thank you. Any other commissioner would like to bring up anything? Julie? No? No? You're good? Charles? Yes, I'd like to bring up something. Um, <clears throat> speaking of trees, you know, be because of the extended drought, a lot of these trees are suffering and have um, suffered damage. Um, and so the, the trees that, that and, I, I, and I, I, I love the idea of planting trees, and I think this is something that we're very fortunate to live in such a beautiful city that has this, uh, this beautiful tree-lined streets and, and really a, a very attractive and, 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 and it helps, to, as, as uh, the mayor said, helps with the oxygen levels and the environment. But some of these trees are suffering and because of the, of the drought, extended drought, and some of them are dying. So, I, I, and I, I, I would like for us to, to consider looking at or, or doing some kind of study on what trees that, that have suffered and should they, should they be replaced. Um, the, other, the other thing too, that I've gotten various complaints uh, from my neighbors here on my street uh, regarding trees that, that drop all these berries that have ruined the paint jobs in a lot of cars. And um, I don't know who planted the trees or, or who chose the trees to be, uh, the kind of trees to be planted, but in some streets, they don't have that problem. And um, it, it, has, it has caused some of the neighbors here to complain about the fact that it's, their, their paint jobs and their vehicles are being damaged. So I, I think we need to look at that. I, I really think we need to do a, a, an assessment of the tree situation in South Pasadena um, and, and where we can plant new trees. But trees that really are, are, um, are not going to either have deep roots that would damage the, the, the sewers and, and people's homes or have these berry problems that, that damage the paint jobs on cars. Yeah. It's gotta have a balance. So we do we do have a project in the works. It's a part of the climate action and the green action plan. It's a um, urban forestry master plan or a municipal forest management plan 
that um, is the next phase of that program. So I did complete a forestry master plan update when I was with Thousand Oaks. I am a certified arborist. So you're asking me questions I'm really excited about. Oh. Um, <laughs> so <laughs> so yes, um, those are all things that we consider uh, when putting together a forestry master plan. So as our, our, our urban forest ages and ebbs and flows, when we do go to replace those uh, mature trees, we make sure that we're replacing them with, a with appropriate trees. So what does that mean? So we look at the size of the space, the infrastructure that's around it, and then we choose a tree that's suitable, that will thrive in that location. And um, <clears throat> I think a couple of months ago with the NREC, um, we were able to work with them and put together a drought and heat tolerant tree list. Um, so that will be available for developers and homeowners and, and um, as soon as we finish it and get it on the website. And so we're, those are all concerns that are very valid and we're, we're definitely working on them. I'm really glad to hear that, Garrett, that you have that background because we love our trees, our, but some of them have caused uh, some issues. Yeah, right? that, uh, without giving you too much history, a lot of times when cities are in, you know, developing, they just would say, hey, you need to put a tree in front of every house. And the developer or whoever would say, great, we're going to put in these European ficus trees. Cool. <laughs> and then in 40 years, you know, you don't realize that the tree is going to be 70 feet tall with a trunk diameter of, you know, 52 inches in a two, two <laughs> foot parkway, right? They're cheap. They're easy. They, they threw them in. Um, so that was just, that was just the way it worked back then. And now um, we do look at things comprehensively to ensure what's the tree going to look like in 40 years? What's the tree going to look like in 60 years? You know, what's the replacement schedule? Will it, will it survive a hundred years in, in that environment, right? Under, you know, uh, pavement conditions. So yeah, those are all things that we have a history of now because we know it doesn't work to put in what works going forward. There is a petition going on about changing Primrose Avenue to Ficus Avenue. <laughs> Well, I can tell you the berries that you're referring to, uh, Charles, uh, if we can somehow, I think they're drought resistant trees, but <laughs> we, can, we can get rid of those berries because my understanding just at South Pasadena High School, they uh, they they planted those berry trees, uh, Charles, right in front of the uh, the new um, uh, gym. So, uh, and, and uh, try getting them off, out, out of your tennis shoes. When you walk step on them, you can't get them out. Uh, I don't want to do a triple backflip. That's all I can say. <laughs> Thank you, Charles. <laughs> David, anything else? I'm good. Okay. All right. And we can hear from our staff if we'd like. Anything, Shahid? I think we covered a lot of things today. I think you covered a lot tonight. <laughs> and thank you. Thank you. It was a good meeting. Very nice. Very well. Thank you all. Thank uh, you, everyone. Is there anything else that we need to other than to make mention of the future meetings March 10th and May 12th, if I'm not mistaken, are the two next meetings. Uh, Raina, I will turn it over to you. Um, are we adjour adjourned, Madam um, if, you, if you are all done with all of Commissioner and staff liaison communications, we can go ahead and adjourn the meeting if you'd like. All right. Then we will at uh, 7.45. Exactly. Thank you all. Once again, we will see you in March, if not sooner. Hopefully, hopefully sooner at our chamber. <laughs> if not, we'll <laughs> We'll zoom you in. Beam me up, Scotty. Thank you all <laughs> once again. Bye. Peace. Thank you. Bye, everybody. Have a great night. Be, Thank be you. Safe. <laughs> Bye. 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 Stop recording now.